Thank you for checking out our video. Uh, I'll talk about rapid mixing of global dynamics up to uniqueness via contraction. Uh, this is a joint work with Aguigui Liu and Eric Vigoda. So the main topic of this talk is about sampling from discrete distributions. And I'll first focus on an explicit example, uh, which is a hardcore model. So we will have a graph G and a parameter lambda. And the Gibbs distribution of the hardcore model is a distribution over all independent sets of the graph G. And every independent set sigma well has a probability density, which is proportional to lambda of it, lambda to its size. So for example, if your graph G is a cycle of length four and the independent set has only one vertex, then the density is lambda over Z. And if, that, if it has two vertices, then its density is lambda square over Z. So here Z is a normalizing constant for the Gibbs distribution and is called the partition function. So for the hardcore model, well, we will study the fundamental computational task, which is the approximate sampling problem. And so we will be given the graph G of max degree data and the parameter lambda. And our goal is to sample an independent set approximately from the Gibbs distribution. And it is known that this approximate sampling problem is computationally equivalent to the corresponding counting problem. So that's the problem of compute the partition function Z approximately. And for these two problems, there is a remarkable connection for the uh, computational phase transition and the phase transitions from statistical physics. And this is given by uh, a so-called tree uniqueness threshold, uh, lambda c, which is given by this formula. And uh, roughly speaking, uh, when your lambda is smaller than the critical lambda, then you will have correlation decay property. So here I will consider every vertex corresponds to a random variable, which, which describes the event that if this vertex is in the independent set or not. So when lambda is small, uh, pairs of vertices, the correlation between pairs of vertices will decay with its distance. And when lambda is large, you might have long range correlations. That is two vertices that are far away from each other but they have a strong correlation. So here is a better illustration for the uniqueness and the correlations. So we will consider uh, data regular trees of height h, and we will consider two a condi conditional measure. So the first one, in the first one, we will fix all the leaves of the tree to be inside the independent set. And in the second one, we will assume all the leaves are, are not in the independent set. So this will give us two conditional Gibbs distribution. And we will be looking at the marginal probability of the root R under these two conditional measure. So this critical lambda marks the point that uh, when your lambda is smaller than the lambda critical, then the marginal of the R under these two conditionals will be well tends to zero when you take the h to be infinity. And when the lambda is larger than lambda critical, this the marginal probability there is the difference of the marginals of R will be bounded away from zero. So that basically means when when lambda is large, you the boundary condition will has a significant influence on the root, while when lambda is small, such an influence will tend to zero with age. And uh, to make things more amazing is that this lambda critical also marks the computational phase transition point. So it is known that like when lambda is greater than lambda critical, uh, there is no polynomial time approximate sampling algorithm and there's some standard complexity assumption like RP is not equal to MP. 
And meanwhile, when lambda is small, you do have a polynomial time approximate sampler. And currently, uh, there are basically three types of algorithm. So the first is by the, is through the correlation decay property. And the running time is n to the order one over little delta times log capital delta. So here, this little delta matches, uh, measures the gap to the uniqueness threshold. And also, there's a polynomial interpolation method. Uh, so this is for the counting problem. And what you do is you consider log of the partition function, and you try to approximate with polynomials. And for this method, uh, the running time is n to some a complicated function of data, a capital data and the small data. And it might be exponential in the capital data. So it's worse, has worse running times and the correlation decay. And finally, uh, which is the main topic of the, this talk, uh, is the global dynamics. So this is a, a classic MCMC method for sampling. And uh, actually, uh, it's also showed recently, and also a paper in Fox this year, uh, that the mixing time, the running time of the global dynamics is n to the e to the one over little data. So you won't have any capital data in the exponents. So this would be a really better running time because especially when the capital data, the max degree is like linear in the size of the graph. And for, for that case, both correlation decay and the polynomial interpolation will have a poor running time. And meanwhile, for the global dynamics, it's actually a polynomial in the maximum degree. And also, uh, from a more uh, practi practical point of view, uh, both correlation decay and the polynomial interpolation are, are really complicated to apply in practice and is actually very slow. But for the global dynamics, it's very simple and fast and uh, widely used. And the running time is actually conjectured to be much faster. It's actually faster than this one. It's like n log n in conjecture. And uh, so this is the a non result. And uh, uh, let me then introduce in more detail what is the global dynamics. So the global dynamics is a classic and simple a Markov chain Monte Carlo method. And uh, so this is a Markov chain and you will be starting from some configuration, some independent set. And in every step, uh, you will pick a vertex uniformly at random and uh, you will try to update the state of this vertex. Uh, but you conditioned on everything else. So like here, this vertex can either be become occupied or stay unoccupied and you want to do it using the condition on everything else so it's from the corresponding conditional Gibbs measure and let's say this one might becomes to be occupied and then you sample another vertex and you update it but this time it's still unoccupied and then you sample again and update again and uh, for example for this one you select this vertex but when you want to update it uh, it has neighbors that already be occupied. So this time uh, it won't become occupied because you always maintain the current configuration to be an independent set. So to, it will stay unoccupied. So this is the a global dynamics. And it's not hard to show that this Markov chain will eventually converge to the Gibbs distribution. Uh, assuming that when you update using uh, when you update you use the conditional measure correctly and uh, to study the global dynamics and uh, a key quantity is the mixing time uh, which measures the number of steps it takes uh, to for your when you reach a configuration that is epsilon uh, in total variation distance away from the Gibbs distribution. And uh, the result of Nari et al. is that when lambda is in the uniqueness region, the mixing time of, of the global dynamics 
as n to the exponential to one over little data. So this running time is polynomial in the capital data, the maximum degree, but its dependency on little data is double exponential. So it's pretty bad. And what we show is that we improve this bound to be n to the order one over little data. So, so that's make it much better uh, in terms of the parameter little data. And moreover, our proof approach is actually a slightly simpler and cleaner and also can be extended to other models, not just while, while for the, the first results only applies to hardcore. So uh, let me introduce a second example where our our results apply. So this is the easing model and which uh, perhaps is the most popular spin system that has been used in st studied and in statistical physics and uh, machine learning and AI. And uh, we will have a graph G and a parameter beta. And now the Gibbs distribution is over all coloring, two coloring of the vertices or like all configurations where every vertex is assigned either red or blue. So um, in, lit in literature, you people usually use a plus minus or zero one for the configuration, but here I'll use uh, red and blue just to easier to for illustration. And for every such assignment, uh, the probability density of this assignment is proportional to beta to the number of monochromatic edges. So for example, if you have all red, then you have four monochromatic edges. So it's beta to four. And for this configuration, this, this like alternating configuration, uh, you don't have any monochromatic edges. So the density is one over Z. And here Z is also the partition function for normalizing. And uh, you can also see from the definitions that when beta is greater than one, then when you sample from it, you are more likely to see a neighboring vertices to ally with each other. So this is called ferromagnetic or attractive. And meanwhile, when beta is smaller than one, then adjacent vertices are more likely to be opposite of each other. And this is called antiferromagnetic or repulsive. And uh, the sampling problem for easy model is also uh, extensively studied. And there's also a uniqueness threshold, beta C data, uh, which is equal to data over data minus two. And for the ferromagnetic case, uh, when the beta is smaller than beta critical, then you do have correlation decay. And meanwhile, when beta is large, you have long range correlations. And uh, a classic result of Jedren and Sinclair actually shows that for the ferromagnetic case, that's a beta greater than one, this uniqueness threshold won't, uh, it won't change like the computational problem complexity. So for all beta greater than one, uh, you do have a polynomial time approximate sampling algorithm. And uh, in particular, when beta is smaller than the beta critical, the global dynamics actually has optimal mixing time, which is n log n. And this is shown by Mosell and Sly. And meanwhile, it's also known that when beta is larger than beta critical, there is some graph such that the mixing time can achieve, it can be like as large as exponential in n. And we will be thus focusing on the antiferromagnetic case. And for the antiferromagnetic case, the uniqueness threshold is delta minus two over delta. And in, for this case, you actually do have the computational phase transition, which corresponding to beta critical. And it's known that beta smaller than beta critical, then there is no polynomial time approximate sampling algorithm. And meanwhile, when beta is greater than beta critical and closer to one, then you do have a polynomial time algorithm either through correlation decay or by the polynomial interpolation. 
but the running time are all uh, end to the one over little data times log capital data. So it becomes a bad when the capital data is like linear in N. And what we show is that when in this case, the running time is actually uh, N to the order one over little data. So that improves upon the previous algorithm through correlation decay or polynomial interpolation. And this is for the easy model. And uh, actually our result applies to a more general distributions, which are called a two spin systems. And for the two spin systems, you also consider configurations, which are a two coloring of the graph. But this time you will have three parameters uh, where beta is for the red, red edges, and gamma is for edges with both endpoint blue, and lambda is for vertices that is signed red. And the Gibbs distribution is uh, upon all, all configurations, all two colorings of the graph. And as every configuration, its density is proportional to beta times to, uh, the, to number of red, red edges, and gamma to number of blue, blue edges and lambda to the number of red vertices. So here is a more concrete example. If you have all red configuration, then you have four red edges and uh, four red vertices. So the density is beta to the four, lambda to the four, and over Z. And if you have two blue, two red, then you have one red edge, one blue edge, and two uh, red vertices. So it's beta, gamma, lambda square and Z is also the partition function. And also you might think that you should also have weight uh, for the red blue edge and also the blue vertices, but these two parameters can be normalized to one. So here this par parameterization already considered all cases. And also you can see from the definition that for the hardcore model, uh, hardcore model basically corresponds to the case that beta is equal to zero and gamma is equal to one. So in that case, you for every configuration with none with positive density, then you won't have any red red edges. So that means all red vertices will form an independent set, and the distribution will become the hardcore model. And for the easing model, that just corresponds to that beta is equal to gamma. So that so you basically have beta to the number of monochromatic edges. And also you can you have the phenomena phenomenon of ferromagnetic, which is beta gamma greater than one, and also antiferromagnetic, that is beta times gamma is smaller than one. And I would like to remark that when beta times gamma is equal to one, then that corresponds to a trivial product distribution and we won't discuss it here. And for, for the general two spin system, uh, you can also define the uniqueness threshold and this is captured by the up to delta uniqueness notion and it's given by Li, Lu and Yin. So this is defined in some algebraic way, but you can also think of it as what happens for the hardcore on a regular data regular tree. But instead of data regular tree, you consider a regular trees of degree one, two, three, up to data. And that's why it's called up to data unique. And uh, in the same paper, as uh, they show that if you have up to data unique with gap little data, then you have the correlation decay algorithm, which achieves running time into the one over little data times log capital data. And what we show is that actually in this region, the mixing time of the global dynamics can already, can already achieve into the one over little data. <clears throat> so it is, the, it is better upon the correlation decay algorithm. And also for the hardcore and the easing model, our results are just corollary of this result here. So for the rest of talk, 
uh, mainly talk about how to achieve our result and our proof outline. So our proof will be based on three steps. The first, we will use the spectral independence results by Anari et al. Uh, so, so in their in their paper, the main result is that for the run, the mixing time of the global dynamics is sufficient to establish the so-called the spectral independence notion. So uh, to do that, uh, you will consider the influence matrix uh, where the influence of two vertex from U to V is defined by when you change the spin of U, how does that influence the marginal probability of V? And if you can show that for any vertex U, if the influence from U to all other vertex or the absolute in, sum of absolute influence from all other vertex to U is bounded by eta, then the mixing time is bounded by n to the order eta. So, so that means instead of uh, to, to show the mixing time is sufficient to consider the sum of influence. And what we show is that we can, we can use the so-called self-avoiding work trees, uh, which has already been studied to establish correlation decay. And we show that uh, to show, to study the influence on the graph is sufficient to study the influence on the corresponding trees. And also we then establish the decay of influence on the trees using the potential method, which is also being applied to study, uh, to establish correlation decay. So let me first introduce what is the self avoiding walk tree. So for any graph G and the vertex R, uh, the self avoiding walk tree is consists of all the self avoiding walk starting from the given vertex R. Yeah. So for example, if the graph G is here and the vertex is R here, then there are three self avoiding walk R U, R U, and R V W, and R W V. So the tree will be look like this, and notice that. Every vertex here in the graph G might correspond to a many vertex, many copies in the tree. And also, whenever a vertex is closing a cycle, say R, V, W, R, then it's the, the spin of it will be fixed by some rules. And the rule is basically saying depends on the total ordering of the vertex. And the classic result by Weiss is saying that if you look at this graph G and the vertex R and the corresponding trees T, then the marginal probability of the Gibbs measure on both the graph and the tree at the root R is exactly the same. So in this way, he, he is able to relate the graph, the Gibbs measure on graphs and that on trees. And that this is a key step key step for establishing the correlation decay property. And also, uh, so what we show is we try to uh, generalize and uh, generalize this property to the influence. And what we show is that if you look at the influence from the root R to another vertex on, in the graph, this is equal to the influence from the root R to all copies of V. So here's an example. If you look at in the G, the influence from R to V, this is equal to, exactly equal to the influence from R to V1 and plus R to V2. Here V1, V2 are just two copies of V. And uh, this lemma, so since the self avoiding work tree might be like exponentially large, like E to the N, and uh, every vertex V might have exponentially many copies. So this lemma becomes very handy when you want to study the influence. So by this lemma, in order to show like the sum of influence from R to V is sufficient to study it in the corresponding T-saw. So that's basically 
uh, reduce the problem from graphs to the corresponding problems from trees. And uh, to study the influence decay on trees, we will also utilize the potential function method given by Li Lu Ying, uh, which established the correlation decay properties on trees. And what we show is that if you look at the influence from R to all vertices that are distant K away from R, then this is exponentially decay with the distance K. And from this, you can show that the sum of influence is order one over little delta. And then by the spectral independence result, the mixing time is n to the one over little delta. So basically, our proof approach indicates that if for every current proofs for establishing correlation decay property, it can be also adapted to show rapid, rapid mixing of the global dynamics. So to summarize, what we show, uh, we establish the rapid mixing of the global dynamics for two spin systems in the whole uh, tree uniqueness region. And also similar results is established for global dynamics to sample from the uniform random Q colorings of a graph. And this is uh, as proved by two group of people. And uh, one open problem is that can we push the mixing time to be n log n as conjectured? So currently our bound is n to the order one over little data. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the proof approach cannot do better than n to the one over little data. This is because the lemma here, uh, the, the influence decays with rate one over little data and it cannot be improved to be better. So, we probably need a few more new ideas to get this, to get analog in. And uh, that's all for the talk. Thank you.